you know, what a good idea it was that God would think that, uh, that he could pour himself into us, amen, that we needed something so dynamic and so powerful like that. And I thought, what a great thing that because of ourselves we can't do it. We need the Holy Spirit, amen. And uh, so it's, a, it's an amazing thing. Last week, Chris spoke about the ascension and, and of course, the ascension and the day of Pentecost, all that were flowing together and, and today I've got to also mix it up a little bit so we'll just go over a bit of ground but it's a good thing because we're living, we are living in a time, I believe, where Australia is going through some stuff and uh, sometimes it feels like it's a bit barren, it's, it's a little bit, uh, you know, there's an expectancy but we don't always see exactly what we want to see. And, and I believe that we're in a place where, of, of waiting or a place of, of that expectancy will grow and develop within us. But I believe we're going to see it. Amen? And, and I'm not going to be put off. I'm not going to be turned away. But, you know, and in this time when we're waiting, how many people know that the waiting game, waiting time is a dangerous time? Because while you're waiting for something, your mind kicks in and your mind starts to take over and your mind starts to question things. And many people uh, today are asking questions uh, saying, why doesn't God do something? Why doesn't God do something? Why doesn't God heal me when he said that he would? Uh, why did God allow me to lose all that money? The investor was supposed to be a born-again Christian. Didn't God say that he wanted me to be blessed? There's a few little statements I want to make here. Number one is, first, I want to say this, there's nothing wrong with God. Turn to somebody and say, there's nothing wrong with God. Nothing wrong with Him at all. There's nothing wrong with the Word of God. The Word of God will not return to Him void. There's nothing wrong with the blood of Jesus. It will never, ever, ever lose its power. There's nothing wrong with the name of Jesus, the mighty name. At the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. It is a name above all names. There's nothing wrong. They that call upon the name of the Lord will be saved, will be delivered, will be set free. There's nothing wrong with the mighty Holy Spirit. It is the power of God. There's nothing wrong with prayer. Prayer still works. You believe that today? The Bible says in James 5.16, it says, Confess your sins to one another. Pray for one another that you may be healed. The fervent, effective prayer of a righteous man avails much. Do you believe that? Do you believe, really believe that? Wrong thinking will not bring you the right answers. Wrong thinking will always come up with a wrong answer. Today, if we're looking at a situation and our mind is, is in control and our mind is trying to work it out, you will never come up with the right answer. So the problem that we think is a problem is not the problem. So if the problem's not the problem, then the answer that you're getting is not the right answer. But many people live with that answer. If the problem with your car is in the gearbox, you can work on the engine all day and nothing will change. What I, what I believe we do, we've got to do, we've got to come back to what God says. And I believe as Christians, as people of God, we must be led by the Spirit, not led by our thinking. We've got to somehow or other change the way we are, the way we think, and we've got to allow the Word of God to dominate and control and be the force that we agree with. If we come into agreement with the Word of God, you will get whatever you ask for. If you can only believe all things are possible. I wonder what God could do if we allowed Him to flow through us without any hindrances. I wonder what God could do if we really, really 
allowed him to be God and flow through us. Though we're human, though we're just natural, but to flow through us to save the world. You see, God is not going to send angels. He's going to use his church. He said, I will build my church that the gates of Hades will not prevail against. That doesn't mean that Jesus is going to put on a nail bag and an apron and go out there and build buildings everywhere. You see, you and I are the church. When we leave this building, it just becomes another hall. But right now, it's the church. Amen? It's a church because we're here. And what really God is saying is, I want to build you so the gates of Hades will not prevail against you. That you can triumph over all the works of Satan and nothing shall by any means hurt you. That you are in control. That God in you, God in you can do exceedingly abundantly above all that you could ever imagine or think. But you see, our mind gets so involved and, and somehow or other our mind wants to control us. I wonder what God could really do. You see, we all want to be used by God. How many people really would like God to use you? We all want to see people saved and healed and delivered. What are the hindrances that stop the mighty power of God flowing through us? I believe again we must understand that is the work of the Spirit and not a work of the flesh. Because we can try to do a lot of things, but unless the Lord build the house, they that build it labor in vain. Because the way we think and because the way we're so aware of our natural man, I believe we should be more aware of our spirit man. But because we're more aware of our natural man, when God speaks to us, and I've said this many times, God never asks you to do something that's easy or that you can do. He asks you to do something that is impossible in the natural. Amen? That's what God does. So when God starts to speak to us, the first reaction is a natural reaction that says, I can't. Where the Bible says, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. What a good idea it is that Jesus said, I'm going to come into you and I'm going to be your strength. I'm going to, be a, I'm going to send somebody that's going to help you in an amazing way. It's not my ability, but God himself who wants to work through us to enforce the victory of Jesus Christ. God wants to work through us to enforce the victory that Jesus Christ won on Calvary. It's so simple that we get so confused. It's a work of the Spirit. Doubt and faith do not mix. Chris was speaking last week, and I want this to go to the book of Acts. So we're going to be speaking about Pentecost. We're going to be speaking about this great time that we celebrate and pray that God would fill us afresh with his mighty Holy Spirit power. Amen. And if we can understand why we don't, and we start to work on that and start to break down the, the wrong thinking that gets into our head and start to push into something so dynamic and so powerful. It's an amazing. In Acts 1, 4, it says, And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart, depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. In reality, when Jesus spoke these words, he was talking about a supernatural event. Somebody say supernatural. Yet the disciples didn't have a clue what Jesus was speaking about. They, they did not understand what he was saying. Jesus was talking in the spirit and they were listening and thinking in the flesh. 
This is one of the great tragedies of humanity is that we don't realize that we are spirit beings. This outward man, and somebody was talking about all this stuff, but this outward man, can I say to you, you can have a body like this if you neglect it. <laughs> but there is, there's this out, outward body that is perishing, but there's an inward man, the real man, the real Neil, that's being renewed day by day. I want to tell you, I bounced into this meeting this morning. Because <laughs> <laughs> somebody said, yeah. But, <laughs> but, but, but there's something that's being renewed. There's an excitement that's stirring. There's, there's something good is about to happen. Amen. You can walk around with the gloom and the doom and, and think of all. But friend, I want to tell you, this is, there's a scratch in there that I can't itch. <laughs> no. Oh, there's an itch in there I can't scratch. <laughs> I knew what I was saying. <laughs> but anyhow, they didn't have a clue what he was talking about. They were listening and thinking with their natural mind. In Acts 1, 6, it says, They asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? In other words, will you overthrow the Roman Empire's dominance and set us free? And Jesus had to bring them back to what he was really talking about. He said, no, you bunch of turkeys. I want you to realize I'm, you're going to be filled with power. You're going to receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. And you see, if we realize what God really did on the day of Pentecost, there would be a stirring and an excitement. And instead of allowing the enemy to trample all over us, we would start to rise up and say, you lion hound, get out of my face. But we accept it because when the enemy speaks, we listen through the natural. When God speaks, we listen through the natural. And these disciples, they didn't have a clue what was going on. As a matter of fact, they were got, they were so, it says when the... Well, <laughs> Take three steps backwards and come back again. <laughs> As a matter of fact, here they are. They're, they're talking to Jesus and he says, You, listen here, you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon you and all of a sudden, shazam, poof, he's gone. They go back. They go back. And what do they do? They start doing church business. They said, they went straight back into the natural. Well, one's gone, we better find another one. So they start doing ballots and they, and they start getting another disciple. I wrote his name down somewhere, I better have a look. Matthias. How's that? That's not bad. And see, what I'm saying is we can just be going through life totally in the natural, but you've got to be looking. You've got to be watching for that supernatural manifestation. Amen. You've got to be looking for God to do. do. And that's what I, I, I don't know how, I don't know when, I don't know why, but all I know is that he said in the last days, I'm going to pour out of my spirit. He talked about a latter rain revival that's going to be greater than any other revival we've ever known. He talks about fathers coming back to their sons and sons coming back to their fathers. He talks about a great move of the spirit, which I totally 100% agree with. Amen. He talks about the, the sower over... Taking the, re the reaper overtaking the sower. Talks about a lot of things that, that, that aren't natural, they're supernatural, but somehow or other I believe it. You've got to believe it. You've got to believe what God says He's going to do, He will do. In Acts chapter 2, let's have a little look at it. Here's these guys that they really didn't know what was going on. They've just, they've just got this guy, Matthias, they've just got him now in the group and they go back to, to, the, to the room to pray and here they are, they're starting to pray. They're all in one accord. They're all scared stiff. They didn't know what was going to happen, but they're just somehow or other, they're all here in one accord and they begin to pray. 
And the Bible says, Oh, Rash Shakabundi, everybody say Shakabundi. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, how many people know that there's a day that's fully going to come? Amen. There's a day that's fully going to come. And they were all in one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven. Where did it come from? From heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them divided tongues as of fire. And it sat on each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Glory to God. Amen. This bunch of people didn't have a clue what was going on, but God did. How many people know that God does? God knows. And God's got a bunch of people. He's gathering a bunch of people that are all of a sudden saying, we don't want the things of the world. We want you. Hallelujah. We're hungry for a revival. We're hungry for a move of God. And I want to tell you, God's looking for hungry people because God feeds hungry people. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Could you put that sign up? <laughs> if you've never been to this church before, it's different. <laughs> Jesus was talking in the spirit, but they were listening in the natural. Friend, we've got to get somehow or other, we've got to get this natural man down. We've got to get him down. In the midst of this great outpouring, many people could only see through the eyes of the flesh. People were amazed. People were perplexed. Others mockingly said, they are drunk. You, you can reason in the natural, but it took the anointing to change the whole circumstance. It took the anointing. It, friend, I want to tell you, we can talk in the natural all day, trying to explain things, but I want to tell you one word in the prophetic, one word from the Spirit, one word, one utterance. Friend, I pray the Holy Ghost would come upon me that I wouldn't just speak as a mere man, but I would speak as a man under the unction, under the Holy Ghost. We've got to have a mantle of the Holy Ghost. That's why we sing. That's why we worship. We're not just singing songs waiting for the late people to come. We're entering into the presence of God. Hallelujah. We want God to come down. We want the anointing to come down because, friend, it's the anointing that breaks the yoke. It's the anointed, not reasoning, not trying to explain away things of the Spirit, but to embrace the things of the Spirit. Ooh. Glory to God. And here they were. They, they were trying to reason with it. But God spoke, and, and this man, as Peter stood up, as, as the power of God. You've got to remember that this man wasn't too long before denying Jesus. You've got to remember it wasn't too long before when the 12 said, let's go fishing, and they all went fishing and caught nothing. You've got to remember that these guys were guys there that really were thinking in the natural. They didn't really understand what was going on. But now, all of a sudden, it says, you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. And now Peter, as, as, he, as the power of God came upon him, this one who denied Jesus three, three times in a row, now he speaks up, but he just doesn't say, listen here, boys. Listen, you know, he just didn't try to reason with them. He said, no. He said, hear the word of God. This is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. Hallelujah. In the last days, saith God. That's what we got to hear, amen. In the last days, saith God. Not Neil, not some preacher, not somebody up here talking away. It's what God says that matters, amen. You can reason, you can tell me why you shouldn't do this and why there's no healing today. I ought to tell you why there's no healing today because the conduit's been clogged. And God can't flow through His church the way He wants to flow through it. Oh, God, give a spiritual agar roll or whatever it is. <laughs> Unclog us in Jesus' name. I'm sorry if I offended you, but... But when you speak under the unction, when, you, when you're unclogged, when, you, when God can flow through you, when, <laughs> is anybody catching my drift here? When God can flow through you, 
Things start to change. Atmospheres start to change. Things start to happen. And Peter stood up. There's an, and you've got to remember that these people had just crucified Christ. They were a lynch mob. They were an angry mob. And fear would have gripped his heart. But now he's unclogged. Hallelujah. My God, lift up your hands if you want to get unclogged. And, he's got, and he starts to speak under the unction of the Holy Ghost. And he said, these men are not drunk as you suppose. But this is what God spoke about. In the last days I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. And he goes on and he speaks. And the Bible says that 3,000 were baptized that day. What would stop the Sunshine Coast from being saved? Clogged up Christians, bogged down. We, we sing songs, freedom reigns in this place. Let me say it again. There's nothing wrong with God. Don't you come to me and blame God for our situation, our circumstance, or whatever's going on. I blame us. Amen? What are you going to do about us? What are we going to do about it? What are we going to do? 3,000 got saved. It's the truth that will help people. I want to tell you, friends, hell will have to freeze over before God's word will fail. We're not just tongue talkers, babblers. No, we carry the mighty power of God, the same Holy Spirit the disciples received on the day of Pentecost is in us. Amen. What's changed? I believe the conduit has been clogged by bad experiences, wrong teaching, and wrong thinking. What could God do if we allowed him to unclog us so he could flow through us? Romans 12, verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, Holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. By the re How do you get changed? By the renewing of your mind. How do you get unclogged? By the renewing of your mind. What do we need? We need our minds to be renewed. Hallelujah. We need to think like God. We need to think God thoughts. We need to think God. We need to think Holy Spirit thoughts. Amen. That you may be able to prove what is that good and what is that perfect will of God. What is the perfect will of God for your life? To sit around playing tiddlywinks? No, it's to be the church. The church on fire. The church ruling and reigning with Jesus. Do you believe that today? Bad experiences, wrong teaching, wrong thinking. If you receive the Holy Spirit, when, then you received all that the Holy Spirit represents. I just didn't get a little dab. I just didn't get a, a little bit. When you receive the Holy Spirit, you receive the Holy Spirit. Is that correct? That means you get everything that He represents. But if your thinking and your teaching and whatever else in your mind says, no, that didn't really happen, you only got a little bit, well, that's all you can have. Until you have your minds renewed, until something goes on in between your two ears. That we start to say, no, I am more than a conqueror. Hallelujah. That's why when people say, how are you going, Neil? I say, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I mightn't look like it, but that's the truth. Somewhere inside this here, there's a six pack. I might have a keg right now, but there's a six pack hidden in there somewhere. <laughs> We've got to start talking what God talks. We've got to talk like God talks, amen. We've got to say what God says about ourselves. He wants to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you could even imagine or think. He wants to blow your mind with what He can do, hallelujah. He wants to do it because He's God and that's what God does. He does those sort of things. When you receive uh, the, the Holy Spirit, you receive all that the Holy Spirit represents. If you receive the giver, then you get the gifts. I want to ask a question again. Anybody need to get unclogged? 
Do you know what you carry? I want to just share some experiences. I've been saved now, I think, 50 years. 40 years ago, we planted the church at Wombai in August, 40 years ago. We saw, it wasn't at Wombai then, it was at, the, it was at a gatehouse and it went to the pineapple shed and then it went to Wombai, went up, yeah. But we saw a move of God. I started the church without Bible, I'd never been to Bible school, I was a Sunday school teacher. We came up here, but the Holy Ghost, I got the shock of my life, friend, when God, when, when I just stood there because I had to, and, and as I opened up my mouth, the Holy Ghost flowed out of me. I, I remember one day I was such a rookie, as a, and I was so terrified. I was halfway through my message, and a lady put up a hand, and she asked me a question that I didn't have a clue of the answer. She put me out of the that bigger mess in my mind, I said, I'm very sorry. I do not know how to start this again from the middle. I'm going to have to go back to the beginning. So I did. <laughs> we never learned how to start a message from the middle <laughs> or get back in the flow once the flow was stopped. So I went back to the beginning. and Nobody ever stopped me again. <laughs> But we saw miracles and amazing things as God began to move and, 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 and he just did exceedingly abundantly. We, we had over a thousand people coming to, 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 the, to the church. It was just people were being born again, saved, filled with the Holy Ghost. It was just an amazing thing. But something happened in 93. When I went over to New Zealand, there was a lady there that had been flowing in a, in a revival. And, and she came over and she laid hands on me and I didn't understand. This is what I'm talking about, friend. Your mind is your greatest enemy. I was watching what was going on, but I was in my mind. I'm trying to work it out in my mind. And my mind was at war with my spirit. But this lady, she laid hands on me. She, she showed me. She took me up the front. She was so desperately trying. And I was as solid as a rock. I will, I will not be moved. <laughs> but I came home from, from New Zealand and as I stood up and I went to talk and there was a man there and I pointed at him and he knocked about 10 rows of chairs over as he went flying back. I went, my God, what happened to him? But all of a sudden, I, I was a conduit that God was using somehow or other. He bypassed my brain. And God started to move and I went over to, uh, to um, PNG and we saw our meeting go from 4,000 to 8,000 in three nights as God started to move as people were just slain in the spirit. We went over to America and, and I met up with a woman by the name of Jan Painter. Some of you might know her. She was a prophetic lady. And she picked me up from, and Nancy up from the airport and she said, let's go and eat. That's what Americans do. <laughs> Pick you up from the airport and you go and eat. <laughs> We're sitting there eating and she said, what's happening? I said, God is moving by his spirit. And as I said those words, she slipped straight off a chair underneath the table. <laughs> this dignified lady, shoo, straight under the table. In the middle of this restaurant. About three minutes later, she started coming up. <laughs> And she looked at me, we just ordered our dinner. And, and she said, let's get out of here. I said, fine. She said, my, my music team are, are having a music practice at the church. Let's go. So away we went. I think Jim drove. I don't know who drove us. But anyway, we got there. She gets the music team. She says, come down, come down. The music team comes down. And, and we, they said, let's get in a circle. I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know what to do. I just grabbed hold of They said, she said, do you think? <laughs> <laughs> so we just grabbed, I just, we just got in a circle. Nancy was there. We just grabbed hold of each other's hands. I, I didn't know what to say. But in two seconds, there was this rather large African-American lady. <laughs> Ooh, 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 
And next minute she took off and she ran round and round and round. She just kept running round and round the building. And, and she come back. And she said, my feet are on fire. My feet are on fire. The piano player, he fell over. He, he was a stubborn old coot, that fellow. But, <laughs> sorry, not great. No. And, and, and all of a sudden, the whole music team are on the floor, the power of God. Friend, I'm talking about what God can do through us if he has got a channel to use. Amen. He doesn't care who. It doesn't matter what. He just wants to move. God wants to move. Can I say it again? God wants to save the Sunshine Coast. God wants to save Australia. Hallelujah. And here, we're there. And then Jan said to me, as a matter of fact, she said, I'm glad you came. She said, because I've been advertising for the last three months, four nights with Jesus. And she said, I've got nobody to speak. It looks like you're it. <laughs> so the first night we get there, the music starts. Jan goes under the power of God. She, she's under the chair. I never saw Jan at one of those meetings. She's under the chair the whole time. <laughs> one time I did see her. She was trying to hide behind the pulpit. She's in the pulpit. But she, people, the power of God just come. Friend, I'm talking about what God wants to do. I'm not bragging on what, I, I tell you what, I, I was having trouble with my brain. They said that when we, if, we, if I sold my brain, I could get a lot of money for it because it's been hardly used. <laughs> Don't try to think with your brain. Are you catching my drift here? It's a move of the Spirit I'm talking about. How many people want the Holy Ghost? Holy Ghost. You can say whatever you like. We went to Pennsylvania. This pastor picked me up. He was also very, very... He says, oh, you're the, you're, uh, you had a Sunday school. You had a school. I said, yeah. He said, will you come and speak to my school? I said, oh, yes, okay. Let him talk to his kids. He brought all the kids in. We started a share. All of a sudden, plop, 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 plop. Kids going out everywhere. Kids falling out. They were laughing. They were crying. They were carrying on. The power, This pastor looked at me, shook his head. We, we ended up, I don't know how we ended up, but we ended up in a, in a big room, just him and I laying on the floor. <laughs> and he was looking at me saying, man, this is amazing. Because kids were everywhere, like, like little sheep everywhere. But it was afternoon, and the parents were starting to come to pick up their children. And as the parents walked through this side door into this big foyer, as soon as the kids saw the parents, about 10 or 15 of them would jump up, run towards them, and start praying over them. All of a sudden, we had mums everywhere on the floor. True. 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 <laughs> True. I'm not trying to kid you. I'm talking about what God can do if he finds the conduit clear. Hallelujah. If we get our minds renewed, if we say, God, have your way in me. We say, have your way in me, but don't do that. <laughs> I've had a pastor. He said to me, he said, we don't believe in people falling under the power. So, okay, fair enough. Don't believe it. Got me to preach. I said, you don't know who you brought. <laughs> Anyhow, we've had a preach. At the end of the, end, end of the meeting, two people gave their life to Christ. They came out the front. I thought, hey, I'm in trouble. So I said to the pastor, I said, come with me. We need to lead these two young men to the Lord. Okay. You hold him, I'll hold him. As we started to pray, the power of God fell. The four of us ended up on the floor. <laughs> he looked at me and said, this shouldn't be happening. I said, no, but it is. <laughs> See, <laughs> I 
I beseech you, therefore, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this natural mind thinking, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. I want to tell you, friends, the greater one dwells within us. The greater one dwells within us. Amen. Greater is he who is in me than he that's in the world. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. What stops us? Wrong teaching, wrong thinking, bad, bad circumstances, bad situations. But I want to tell you, this is the day of Pentecost. Peter stood up in the midst unclogged spoke the word of God and I want to say the word of God is as truly as I live all the earth will be filled with my glory and I'm going to pour out of my spirit on the just and on the unjust we're seeing a lot of Outpouring of the Spirit on the unjust at the moment. Hmm? But the just shall live by faith. Father, help us. Help us, my God, to allow you to flow through us. Help us to allow you to have your way. Have your way in me. Have your way in me. We saw in Russia an amazing move of God. I don't know how many people gave their life to Christ in this meeting. KGB were there. But we made an altar call and all these people, I thought they'd never respond. My brain said they will never respond, but they responded to Jesus. We had this rather large platform and it had steps either end. And as people came, I brought them up on the platform because there's no room in the front. And as they stood on the platform, as soon as their foot touched the platform, the power of God hit them and they got slain in the spirit. Not only did they get slain in the Spirit, they got filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues. Don't be surprised what God can do in your life if you put yourself in a position for Him to use you. Amen? Get unclogged, my friends. Get unclogged. Get unclogged. And yes. What do you call that place again? Compass. Compass will be saved. If Michael has got anything to do with it, Compass will be saved. Compass will be saved. Father, give us a thousand like Michael. Give us a thousand like Michael. Don't get too excited now, Michael. Give us a thousand like Michael. Just play. Don't, don't, just play. Just do that. Do that. Yeah. Just play. Let's play. Come on, just play. Just play. Come on, let's play. Come on, let's just play. Just play. Just play. Come on, let the Holy Ghost get over you. Come on, open up your heart. Let the King of Glory come in. Who is this King of Glory? He is the Lord strong and mighty in battle. He is the King of Glory. I am not ashamed of the gospel. It is the power of God under salvation. Here's a bit of sound. Give these boys a bit of sound. Why don't we stand to our feet? Holy 
ghosts in this place. this place today and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior friend that's the beginning and it is only the beginning it is not the end it's the beginning of a dynamic powerful life where he will lead you and touch you ladies and gentlemen it's a move of the spirit it's a move of the spirit that can touch us today and touch areas of our lives the Bible speaks about repentance talks about receiving the Holy Spirit. And this great day, this great celebration of the outpouring of your Spirit, Lord, touch many people in this house right now. Touch them, my God. And folks, if you're in this place today and, and you know that, that you know what I'm talking about today, you know what the Spirit of God's saying to you, that you've allowed the things of this world to clog you. You've allowed hurts and disappointments and failures and defeat and goodness knows what else. Or you've just allowed the cares of this world just to, to get in there and clog up. And, and you know that, that as you're not flowing the way you should flow. You're not being free the way God wants to free you. You don't have that freedom and that liberty that, that God wants to give you. That's you today. I, I want you to just come and stand, be honest, be real. Say, I want to be free. I want that freedom. I want that to be unclogged. I, I want that, that, your, uh, whatever it is you want. Just come and stand. Come and stand. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Friend, I just can't stress enough to move of the Spirit. It's a Spirit thing. It's not a natural thing. It's a spirit thing. It's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by my spirit. So Father, help us. Help us in this house. Father, I pray for those that are going to be water baptized. Father, I pray today that it will be something that's so real. They wouldn't just go in dry and come out wet. But my God, that they would come out filled and touched by the mighty power of God. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. God bless you today.